Welcome friends to another Dune video. Today we are going to examine one of the Bene Gesserit's biggest tools of manipulation, the Mission Hour Protectiva. How would this be established, work in practice and be maintained and used by them? Spoilers for the Dune Encyclopedia throughout, let's get into it. The Protectiva's function is to maintain passwords throughout communities in the known universe that trigger a response so they give safety to a stranger when the right words are said. The Bene Gesserit's breeding program to find the Quisatz Hadarach can be hurt and set back generations if a sister is killed, so the redundancy of many lines of protection, such as this one, are needed. Agents of the Missionara Protectiva are pattern makers who create and install in each separate culture password systems and also test systems to ensure that these systems cannot be misused and to ensure each planet's culture makes use of them innocently. The further you go from civilized worlds, the more that culture would need to be reprogrammed. On those worlds, legends, with all the accompanying accessories of songs, rumors and nursery rhymes, had to be invented and inserted in the primitive cultures but also meet established beliefs and soften the cultural fear of strangers. The Missionara Protectiva also needed a way for information to feed through to the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood, so they would know what to expect when under threat in these distant places. The appropriate litany to learn in these situations is an example of this. The Protectiva used two pivot points in culture, the first approach that point as a mysterious benefactor. They will do something to benefit the culture, so they will have to enlist them. The second point needs a stranger at the other side of the point, a saviour who could signify some type of success. The legends of the culture would be manipulated, so a Bene Gesserit adept could bring mysterious techniques to help in achieving success, and for a great leader who would signify that success was at hand. Once a culture's system of values had been examined and stories made to match those values, agents would after, having learned the legends, melodies, rhythms, cultural techniques and modulation skills of the planet, with a fake identity as journalists, itinerant crafters or image recorders, sell these sisterhood created legends to make them popular so they would be accepted. Another way to do this would be to infiltrate and alter the curriculum of a planet, so the younger generations would be taught what the sisterhood wanted. Some pattern makers drifted through society, spreading obscene jokes and inscribing public walls. Others wrote, composed, painted and hollowed their way into classic status without help from curriculum manipulators. At fairs, festivals and faddish museums, in pulp serials and bound volumes, via interplanetary broadwave and personal digidisc, they spread each other's work across a civilization. Then recognition triggers can be used so a Bene Gesserit can notice tested phrases and the responses they would need to give. This was established on Dune with the role of the Mahdi, with it being the only place in the galaxy found to produce spice and with spices being important to both the Bene Gesserit and the larger galaxies factions special importance was placed on the Protectiva in this place. The Protectiva could not predict everything and it could not predict that the Kwisatz Haderach would be found on Arrakis and feed into the Magi legend placed by them there. The Missionara Protectiva planted a swath of indicators to serve as signals. He was to be a child who thinks and speaks like a man, with questing eyes and an air of reserved candour, and he would seek to know Fremen ways as though born to them. In a society that holds important hopes, and where discomfort is accepted, because today's pain will speed the achievement of tomorrow's hopes, a glimpse of the signs of coming success is itself urgently desired by the Fremen people, which is why they go into such a cultural frenzy when Paul is found in Arrakis. 
There was also the other part of this that established a great mother that would be tested. These tests were manipulated and arranged so only a Bene Gesserit could pass them, and one who was a potential reverend mother. Reciting the prayer of Salah would qualify them to play the role of a Fremen type of reverend mother. But the Bene Gesserit can't control everything, as we saw above, and the Missionara Protectiva's legend was modified so that this great mother would have to be championed by someone. This change and the water of life was another change that the Fremen added outside the diktats of the Missionara Protectiva. The Bene Gesserit wanted survival using the mechanism of the legend, not the high visibility and power that the Fremen adjustment brought with it. A source of material on which the Missionara Protectiva draws is the Panoplia Propheticus. This gives detailed methods the sisterhood can use to manipulate religion in order to exploit primitive cultures. It has prophecies and litanies that are placed into young cultures in order to make sure the Bene Gesserit have protection when doing fieldwork there. The primary myths used involve the worship of a female deity, the veneration of pregnant women and of the prophetic wisdom of old women, and the salvation inherent in the prophesied male saviour figure, legends necessary to protect the breeding lines and the espionage work of the order. For these mythic implantations to work, a newly formed social group is exposed to superstition that is grounded in their primitive fears of both the unknown and what they do not understand about the natural world. This argument is then spread through certain words that have hidden arguments. No matter if something is right or wrong, true or false, when you choose one outcome over another, you agree with the assumptions in those words which express those arguments, signs the Bene Gesserit can see. By this definition, the Panoplia Propheticus therefore is actually a collection of all the myths ever seeded by the sisterhood and an index of patterns suitable to specific environments, both natural and social. It has three parts to it, the Shari A, which contains the rituals which were seeded, the Shari B, which links the rituals, superstitions and myths to their specific Bene Gesserit purposes and the Canto et Respondu, a collection of invocation rites, benedictions and litanies. A litany is a series of petitions used in church services or processions. Invocation rites are a ritual wherein a witch will invoke the energy of a deity spirit or other higher power. And a benediction is the utterance of a blessing, especially at the end of of a religious service. But of course, all these things with the Bene Gesserit are for show and to manipulate people. These are not concepts that they actually believe in. In essence, the Panoplia Propheticus presents a science of religion employed by the Bene Gesserit through their missionary branch. Now friends, I turn this over to you. What do you think to the methods the Bene Gesserit employ? Can you see how they fit with the sisterhood's objective of the Kwisatz Haderach? Have you employed a hidden phrase to obtain acceptance in another culture? Comment down below.